Are we delusional? A cross-country trip plan. I am not the original poster. That is May 12,398. They posted in our road trip. A nice low-stakes palette cleanser for you in the midst of more dramatic posts. Mood spoiler. The right choice is made. Less than. Original post. December 2, 2023. My family is moving from Texas Gulf Coast region to Idaho. About two hours out of Idaho Falls. We're leaving the week before Christmas. We have a 2.5 yo and a 3 mo. I breastfeed the baby. We are planning on driving straight through. My husband and I switching off shifts. When we stop for gas, potty, food. I will feed the baby while hubby plays with toddler and runs around with her. We also only have one car. A small hatchback that barely fits all of us with the car seats in. And we'll be pulling a small U-Haul trailer. This means the whole trip. We won't be able to drive over 55 miles per hour realistically. This is literally what we can afford to do. No budget for hotels or nice meals. We're packing a cooler full of stuff for sandwiches, salads, hard-boiled eggs, etc., and a big bag of snacks for the toddler. The move will put us in a much better financial position once we get there. But getting there we are stretching to our absolute limits. How crazy are we? Any recommendations for ways to make it somewhat easier? We'll have a tent if we need to stop for some rest on public camping land. But with us all being from Texas I doubt we'd be able to really handle the cold on that drive to sleep outside. Relevant comments. This comment exchange. Commenter. This is literally 24 hours. Going from basically a desert straight into several feet of snow in the mountains in a small hatchback i'm just assuming a honda fit dragging a trailer in the winter if you don't have a wd 4x4 fresh winter tires tire chains emergency kit for below freezing and knowledge of winter drive in bad to very bad conditions this is suicide dot in with kids if you legit aren't properly equipped nor have the necessary experience training for the weather this is straight up child endangerment oop both my husband and i have experience driving in the snow ice and mountains we've both spent considerable time in idaho and utah in the winter he went to college in the area and i have a lot of family in the area whom i've visited several times throughout my life and drove during all those visits which typically took place around Christmas. Our car will have the correct equipment for the weather, including fresh winter tires, new brakes, and the emergency kit for breaking down with relevant gear for the weather. We take our family's safety very seriously. ETA. Ford Focus. Not a Honda Fit. I know nothing about the cars so I DK the difference there but thought it may be relevant. Most commenters say they're crazy and should get a hotel. Update post. December 3rd, 2023. Next day. Title. Okay, so we were delusional. I made a post last night about driving with my family straight from the Gulf Coast region of Texas to Idaho without stopping to sleep. Just switching out drivers. Thank y'all for the reality check. We won't be doing that. Here's our updated plan for anyone who may want to know. I have family in Arizona. So instead of going through Albuquerque, we will stop the first night in Tucson. We'll stay there until we're well rested. Then drive from there to my family's in SLC, where we will rest until ready to make the final four-hour drive. I know that's still going to be two really long days of driving, but it's significantly more manageable. We'll also be leaving next week instead of trying to wait as long as we originally planned. So hopefully going earlier we will have a better chance at beating the really bad weather. There were a few assumptions made from that post I'd like to address in case people are worried. About the kids. 1. We are very aware of the child safety risks of babies being in car seats too long without being readjusted. 
We intend to stop every two hours to feed baby and let toddler wonder with dad while I feed baby. During this time, we will top off the gas, eat, go potty, stretch, etc. Yes, they will be long stops. But our kids' safety is our top priority point too. No, I'm not going to leave the baby in the car seat and try to twist my body to feed the baby while my husband drives? That was a wild one. We would absolutely stop at a gas station or Walmart or something where toddler can safely roam. Holding dad's hand and I can pull baby out of the car seat to feed baby the way I normally would. Point three. I have a family member who runs a car dealership who has had the maintenance crew prep our vehicle. For the drive, this includes weather appropriate tires, fresh brakes, oil change, and I'm sure other stuff I decay because cars aren't my specialty. Point four. The maintenance crew also verified with the hitch we are getting and how small the trailer we will be using is, along with how few things will be inside that trailer. Our car will be able to safely tow without coming close to max towing capacity. For those who offered to help house us for a night, thank you very much. That is very kind and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season full of blessings. We won't be taking up any of those offers. But we greatly appreciated the kindness expressed in the offer. Thanks again to everyone for the reality check about trying to do that drive without stopping for long rest a few times. I hope this new plan puts some of you at ease. I live in a big country too, Australia, but here we only worry about extra heat. I cannot imagine the challenge of driving from desert into snow. I'm glad OOP listened to advice. It's good OOP listen to the advice. Some of my family have drive on the roads from heat to snow before and it's really challenging. It can be very risky and dangerous if not properly planned out or prepared. Can't imagine what would happen if OOP didn't take the advice. As soon as I saw the kids' ages, I thought this is going to be a nightmare. I'm glad they're stopping with family instead. I did a day and a half drive a few years ago as a passenger. And even stopping for breaks. It was awful. I spent an hour just walking around when we got to the motel at the end of day one lol. So instead of going through Albuquerque, we will stop the first night in Tucson. That's. I-10 is under construction right now if I remember right and that's the road they'll be taking. Logically to hit Tuscon, they'll probably hit I-17 which is always under construction. Or detour to 89 and go I-40 which may the Lord have mercy on their souls if they take that route. That road is horrible for accidents. Flagstaff has been getting snow on top of the fact that all the snowbirds are now down here. Clogging up the roads. This Arizonian believes this oop did not prepare enough for delays. And from checking this just to be sure I ain't crazy. Yeah they are in for a possible rough trip. Always check a states.website website when planning a trip people. Save yourself a headache. As someone who lives in a pretty famous mountainous state. This is the worst idea I've ever heard. Driving in the snow sucks. Driving in the snow half asleep? With a trailer? Just issue the mountain a dare. Why don't ya? For those who offered to help house us for a night, thank you very much. That is very kind and I hope you have a wonderful holiday season full of blessings. We won't be taking up any of those offers. But we greatly appreciated the kindness expressed in the offer. There are so many good souls out there. I'm glad OOP asked. So many people would try to push through. Not realizing all the things they don't know. And get themselves into trouble. As an example. A UK guy we knew visited our city and had dinner with us. It was his first trip to Canada. He asked us what we thought about his plan to drive from Vancouver to Jasper in a rental car. A guy used to driving in London. Driving on the wrong side of the road for 8 hours in a rental car without snow tires. 
or chains through the rocky mountains in winter with all the snowpack that entails we stridently urged him not to he got a train ticket instead and was very happy with the experience i just did a 12-hour drive out of the blue recently to do an emergency pickup i drove alone for half of it anyway in pretty acceptable conditions started in snow and fog and returned in it but most of the drive was nice and i was freaking dead at the end i can't imagine doing a much longer drive with two small kids through weather changes like that why would they not have modified the route first to easily see family for free rather than a dangerous long trip straight through it adds like three hours to the total trip time which is nothing when you get two free places to stay for the nights my husband blew the transmission on his subaru trying to haul a trailer over the continental divide similar route too i can't imagine a ford focus whatever is better equipped for that task even on the revised schedule and stopping every two hours I wonder how a 2.5 year old will handle that long a day in the car. I personally can't look at much, even a screen, for very long in the backseat of a vehicle before I start to feel hungover. Nice of their family member to give them $1,000 plus in tires, brakes and maintenance. I want an update once they finish the trip mostly because i want to soothe my worst case anxiety and want to hear they made it safe i live in idaho western side near boise idaho falls is on the eastern side of the state and can be brutal in the winter the wind has almost pushed semi trucks pulling trailers off the roads there are plenty of near misses and lots of drivers who pull off to let the wind ease up I'm glad they changed their plans. They need to be well rested to handle the winter roads. Doable with a 6 month old, not a 3 month old. Big empty states all around there. My biggest concern is you need to be prepared for the unexpected. We lived in Alaska for 2 years and I drove from Fort Hood to Anchorage over 30 days. 4,419 miles. You need to ensure your emergency supplies include several days of emergency rations and survival. Equipment for cold weather. If you end up stranded along an isolated highway and the car isn't running. You need equipment to survive in an unheated vehicle. It is best to make preparations you don't use than to need items you don't have. Preparations like that were critical when we ended up stranded in northern British Columbia. Returning from Alaska. I moved with a five-month-old. We broke the trip down into two days. The second day was ten hours. It was awful. We had to stop to often to feed him and he was getting cranky from being in the car. We had four other kids in a minivan and my husband would take the other kids out at each stop to wander around. We do road trips a lot but after that trip, we try to break it down so we don't drive more than 8 hours in a day. Little one is 3 now. And it's easier in some ways because he can eat in his car seat so when we stop he gets to run. Around and burn energy. I have to run across country from California to NYC twice. And the best advice I got was to listen to audiobooks. It helps to pass the time when you're driving for 8 hours. When your plan is an episode of I Shouldn't Be Alive, you should probably rethink lol. HTTPS. U2.be slash E3M1RXHRC. C equals 61 div 7 UHHQFWTFZ. I hope op posts again when they are safe at their destination. My heart gorges out to them. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.